I've been waiting for five weeks to say this. Well, I'm glad to see you too. That's not what I was waiting to say, but I'm glad to see you too. Awake, O oh sleeper, and rise from the dead. Amen. I threatened to do that to my kids a couple of times on vacation, but I didn't do it. I, a couple of times. I probably should have. Um, anyhow, it's so good to see you this morning. Um, great to be seen by you if you are visiting with us. There happens to be a card in the back of the pew in front of you that you can fill out, and put as little or as much information as you'd like for us to have. We promise not to spam you with a bunch of stuff. Um, but we would love to have that opportunity to connect with you. Um, if you are worshiping with us online, welcome. There is an opportunity for you to do something very similar. have several announcements to bring to your attention this morning. First of all, today is the last day for us to purchase um, plate tickets for the military like we do each year. They're $12 each. Um, we have 70 of the 118 already covered. Um, please, you can uh, give your money to Sue. I don't know. Will you take the money? She, Sue will take the money. Sue's right here in green. Wave your hand, Sue. Not everybody knows. Yeah, so there's Sue. Um, and, uh, but you can bring that by the church office probably tomorrow. We'll probably accept that. Um, maybe. I don't know. Nobody's told me that was okay, but I just said it. Um, but that today is our last day for that. Pants collection. Um, it's kind of a, a funny thing, but it's a great thing that we're doing, collecting pants um, for homeless people in Jackson. Um, it was rather comical when I was walking through the doors this morning coming into the church and someone said, well, we've got a table full of pants. Let's see if the men are wearing any today. Um, fortunately, that's not all of your pants, um, thank, thankfully, um, but we are doing that as well as a shoe collection, and you've been hearing about that. We continue to do that to help those in need, and Vacation Bible School is coming up soon. Do you need some more volunteers? Do you need some help? Always need more volunteers and more help. Coming up July 7th through the 11th, this will be in the evening from 530 p.m. till 8 p.m. If you have not signed your child up for that or grandchild up for that or your neighbor's child up for that, then go ahead and do so. But you might want to get permission from your neighbor to do it first. That would be, that would be, I'm glad you caught that, Delina. Nobody else did. That's okay. That is a little of what is going on in our life together as a church. And now let us take a moment and pray. Oh God, we are so grateful to you for this time that we have together. We're grateful to be back together. Um, the church has continued on, of course, in our absence, and your church marches on. And we ask that you would use this time that we have together this morning as a part of your continued transformation in each of our lives so that together we might be your church. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
I invite you to rise now in body or in spirit as we join together in our call to worship. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Love divine, all loves excelling, hymn 88. the spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Good morning, everybody. 
Thank you. Oh, oh, come on, kiddos. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Hey, Wyatt. How you doing? <laughs> I know it. I know it. Okay, so today we're going to talk about hey boys, the skeleton coast. The, eye, the eyes got big over here. The skeleton coast. You're not scared. You're not scared of skeletons. I'm glad you do. John 10:10 10, 10 says, "I came to give life, life in all its fullness." So let's see what he means by that. What did the pirates? What did the ocean say to the pirate? What did the ocean say to the pirate? Nothing. It just. Read, you read my book. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> you knew the joke? All right, say it again. The joke, nothing, it just waved. That's right, nothing, it just waved. That may be funny, but the waves around Namib Namibia's, look at I said that wrong, I told you. Before. Namibia's skeleton coasts in Africa are not. The stormy winds there never stop blowing. They whip up the waves and twist the ocean's currents and the fogs get so thick that the captains can't tell where the water ends and the rocky coast begins. All that adds up to a lot of shipwrecks. The Skeleton Coast is the world's largest ship cemetery with the bones of thousands of ships sticking out of the sand. That means all the wood was sticking out of the sand. That's what that means. There are ocean liners, Fishing, fishing trawlers, gunboats, sailing clippers, and even an old pirate's galleon. It's impossible to count them all, though. The wind keeps moving the sand dunes, covering up some wrecks and uncovering more. But there's more to this coast than skeletons. Animals like black rhinos, elephants, lions, cheetahs, hyenas, jackals, giraffes, oryx, kudos, kudos, Zebras and seals all live there. In fact, it's one of the few places on Earth where all these animals are found together. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's what it looks like. See the skeleton coast is kind of like that. Oh my! Yes, that's right. So, God creates rich and diverse life, even in the most unexpected places. That's easy to forget when you're in one, in one of those unexpected places. Maybe your neighborhood, school, or church is filled with people from lots of different cultures, and you're not sure where you fit in. That's when you have to choose. Stay stuck in the sand or reach out. Talk to the people around you. Learn where they're from and their favorite foods and traditions. Share some of yours. You can learn so much about the world, about yourself, and God when you reach out to people who are different from you. People who are all made in the beautiful image of God. Explore the wonder. How does an elephant cross the desert sand? With style. The elephants living along Namibia's skeleton coast have adapted to their desert life. That includes learning how to travel over huge dunes of sand. They surf. After climbing to the top of a dune, they use their front legs to pull themselves down, while, they s while their back legs simply slide along. Pray with me. Lord, open my eyes to see the richnesses and the wonder you have placed in all the different people around us. Amen.
Let us pray. Oh, Jesus, Christ before us, Christ beside us, Christ behind us, our one and only true hope as we gather this morning and we worship you. We come as people with everything that that means, fallible persons, living imperfect lives, seeking to follow you while living in a world which is seeking anything but. And we come and we are grateful to you knowing that you are before us, beside us, and behind us. Jesus, our Christ, our Lord, we thank you. God, we come to you this morning with various concerns, various struggles and difficulties, various hopes and dreams. yet again, people, with all that that entails. And we come to you in need of grace, acknowledging that we've fallen short, sometimes in large ways and other times in small ways. And we see you, Jesus Christ, before us, Christ beside us, Christ behind us. We recognize in you salvation. Salvation that was accomplished on the cross at Calvary. Salvation which is changing our lives each and every day as we're drawn closer to you and closer to one another the hope of salvation that will come at what some might call the end of time, which is actually the dawn of time, when you set everything right and we are restored fully, fully human, realizing the magnitude and the fullness of your love. But until that time, Lord Jesus, we pray that you would help us. You've called us as your church. You've called us as a force, some would say an army, that lives in such a way that it changes the world. That it makes not just the world a better place, but a more holy place where heaven and earth get joined together. It's a tall order, Lord. The barriers are great. But we sing praises to you knowing that you are greater still. Christ before us, Christ beside us, Christ behind us. Help us, Holy Spirit, you who dwell in us, our counselor, the one who gives us the strength that we need to walk in that newness of life. Help us, O God, so that as your disciples, we may live more fully into this prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's continue our worship now with the great hymn, Marvelous Grace of Our Loving Lord, number 558. God, we acknowledge that all that we have and all that we are belongs to you. For we bring now your tithes and our offerings, and we ask that you will use these for the advancement of your kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
may be seated. Scripture this morning is taken from Romans chapter 3, verses 20 through 24. Romans 3, 20 through 24. Listen now for the word of the Lord. For no one can ever be made right with God by doing what the law commands. The law simply shows us how sinful we are. But now God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law as was promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago. We are made right by placing with God, by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. For everyone has sinned, we all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God, with undeserved kindness, declares that we are righteous. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Pray with me now, if you will. And now, God, I ask that either through me or in spite of me, that you would speak to these, your people. Amen. Yes, if you haven't noticed, we've been gone for a little while. You you didn't know, Nick? I'm your neighbor, and you didn't know I wasn't there? So we, we went on an epic trip. Now, this is not something that we have just decided a few weeks ago we're going to do. And in fact, we called this trip third times the charm. But I found out it was actually the fourth time. We have been trying for four years to take this epic trip out west. We wanted to take the kids to, um, we wanted to take them to first Grand Tetons and to Yellowstone. For a period of time, we were going to go to Glacier. The IRS had other ideas and took a little bit of extra money from us this year. And so we said, we're not going to do that. But on the way back, we hit um, Monument Valley and Great Sand Dunes National Park, which was actually really, it was kind of cool. But anyhow, so we we did all this. And um, as many of you know, we took a travel trailer. We have this travel trailer. We're towing it. Everybody's like worried about us towing it with our Ford Expedition. And I'm like, you know, no, it's no problem. Well, that's another story, but we did make it there and we made it back. So so we, we did it safely. But one of the things that I was hoping for but was unprepared for was how overwhelmingly beautiful, in particular, Grand Teton National Park is. It was absolutely breathtaking. Now, we, um, we got there. It took us five days to get there. And this is on our fifth day. And you can't see it, but this is a selfie. This is the first time we saw the Tetons. Can you see them? They're there in the background. They're, you can't, I mean, it's really kind of hard from this picture. But there they are, and they rise up, and it's just like it. It is, it's like, an, I, don't, I don't even know how to explain it. It is one of those things where you go, how is this even real? And an hour or so later, we arrived at our campsite and got set up and did all that. And we walked five minutes from our campsite um, to this view over um, Coulter Bay in, in, on Jackson Lake. And... I'm telling you, pictures cannot do this place justice. It is one of those things where you're like, I don't understand. This, this, you know, it, um, in uh, Despicable Me, I didn't ex- plan to quote Despicable Me this morning, but you know how um, uh, Vector steals the pyramids 
and there's that, the kid flies into the pyramid and finds out it's just a balloon that's been, okay, I thought it was like that. It's just, it's like these can't be real. They're there, but it is just this, the beauty is just absolutely incredible. The scale, by the way, you see the little dot middle of the bottom of the page? That's a kayaker. Um, the tallest of these peaks is 13,770 feet high. Um, our campsite was, what, about 6,500 feet? So we're way, I mean, the elevation is just incredible. It's one of these things where as I'm taking pictures, I just can't stop everywhere I look. But the problem is that I'm taking these pictures, but cliche time, the pictures can't do it justice. Like, I'd like, I think the only way you might could get a sense of this is that you're sitting in an IMAX theater, and we did just IMAX, and we just, you know, where it's just, t- or, no, let's be a little bit more modern. You're at the Sphere in Las Vegas, okay? You know, maybe you've got where it's just 360 view. Utterly incredible. And, of course, the wildlife there is, is amazing, the, the bison. Now, the, honestly, the bison are a little annoying, and I'll get into that at another time. You didn't think I was going to waste this vacation and not have a lot of sermon illustrations built up. You're absolutely dead wrong. If you, but so the bison, they're they're you know it's pretty cool, but they are annoying, and particularly when you get to Yellowstone because they just like to, to just clog up the roads for no good reason, and they, you're just stuck behind them. Um, but everywhere you look, it's just like a postcard. Un. Unbelievable beauty. This is, by the way, this is the, the marina at Coulter Bay. Um, and it, it's just, how do you do this? We were up on um, some mountain and we were overlooking this Jackson Lake. Now, of course, there's, there's people who have lived there for a long time. Um, this is Menor's General Store. This is over in the um, southern part of the park. Here we have the most, what is sometimes called the most famous barn in the world, John Moulton's barn. Um, although I think T.A. Moulton's barn is actually much more beautiful. Here Isaac is um, getting a better angle on it than I was. But we just, it's it just had a great time. Now this picture of us here, it's kind of actually kind of funny because the lady was so worried about chopping off her fi- our feet. Why you didn't just chop off our feet, you chopped off the mountains too. But anyhow, you did it. It's, it, was, it was great. She took a picture of us. And everywhere you go, it's just unreal. Now, y'all know I'm a, a bit of a hack photographer. So here is my best. This is the Snake River and Grand Tetons made famous by Ansel Adams. Here's my, my best Ansel Adams impersonation, um, so, which I was kind of happy with. The clouds were really helping out that day. It was a terrible day weather-wise. But then there is on um, the southern side also Chapel of the Transfiguration Episcopal Church. This is an amazing setting. But what I want you to see is this. This is the view behind the pastor. What's the point of even trying to preach? I mean, this is just like, it's it's all I could do just to, to... process this in my mind the overwhelming beauty of it all now somebody said well I'm sure you just kind of get used to it and we were we were there we had five nights there in Grand Teton and and so we we did a pretty good explore of the park and it was great but I I never got used to it every morning I would wake up and it was like I can't believe that this is there And it's kind of like that with God's grace. It's kind of like that. You see, we have this thing we talk about in the church. We talk about grace. But I don't know that we comprehend the magnitude of it. Now, let's just define terms real real quick, just simple terms. But grace... It has been defined generally as unmerited favor, right? Um, Grace is that thing, you don't deserve it, but it was given to you anyway. Um, 
Grace is that having, um, receiving a gift in the sense um, from somebody who you actually hurt and offended. Okay? Let me give you a, just a, a real quick picture of grace. Where most of us have gone out to eat and gone someplace where we're sitting down and we're being served. And have you ever had that time when the server just really was a jerk? Has anybody? Y'all hadn't eaten out very much if that's not been the case. We've all had that where the server, and so what do you tip them? Well, this is a pet peeve of mine. You know, some people go, well, I'm going to put pennies on the table or whatever because, you know, this person who is having a bad day, you're just going to determine to make it worse. Um, I would say this, that if you prayed before your meal, this is my, you've heard me say this before, but if you pray before your meal publicly, you need to tip at least 20%. And if you get bad service, guess what? You ought to give 30. That's grace. God, who we have offended by the way that we live and the way that we act, shows to us undeserved kindness. And if we recognize the magnitude of it, it should be overwhelming. It is, an, uh, I would say, people have asked me, they, they sent me texts, which is like, what do you, how would you describe this place? I'm talking about the Grand Tetons. I just called it overwhelmingly beautiful. And here it is, God's grace shown to us. God has shown us, Paul writing to the church at Rome, God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law as was promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago, we are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. Now let me tell you just a couple of things that aren't there. Just, just a couple of things. Um, number one, it doesn't say you were made right with God by being from the United States. We are blessed to live in this country, y'all. We really are. And it was kind of fun bumping into some, some people from other, other countries. And we, were, we had one campsite, and the, the couple next to us and their daughter was there from Switzerland. And, and they were really kind of cool people. They were just like, wow, this country is so big. And it's like everywhere you go, it's very different. And it's like each state is different, and yet it's, it's huge. And they had spent, y'all think I spent a long time. They had been touring the states for three months. Um, you know, that sounds pretty good. Um, but anyhow, so th that's a long way down the road, though, y'all. That's going to be what. But so, the, yes, we, but that doesn't, that, that's not, it doesn't say that. Um, something else that it doesn't say is that you are declared righteous because you're here this morning. You should be here this morning. You are here. Congratulations. That's great. That doesn't make you righteous. That doesn't make you holy. Is it a part of God's work in your life? Absolutely it is. I, I pray that it is. It's my hope that it is. That, that the time that we spend together is a part of what? That transforming work. Because God doesn't want to leave us like we are. He wants to transform us. He wants to make us new. He wants us to be such radically different people that everywhere we go, we affect it. We change it because of who we are, more appropriately, because whose we are. is. But that it doesn't say that. That's, that's why it, it doesn't say, now I'm standing here by the offering plate. Y'all, I'm so, so grateful. But it, it doesn't say that you're made right because you gave a certain amount of money this morning. 
that's part of discipleship. It's a, it's a part of growing and, and knowing that God is God is that we give of what has been given to us. But it doesn't say anywhere in here, as long as you tithe, you're going you're gonna to get all kinds of, of grace. No. God, in His grace, freely makes us right in His sight. God and His goodness, this, 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 I mean, we, we've got, we still sometimes have this idea that God's up there and He's just, just waiting for you to mess up. He's, if He's waiting on anything, He's waiting on you to come to Him and say, God, I messed up. Can you, can you help me? This is, it's simple, okay? It's, it's, but, do we understand the beauty of this? Paul Tripp said that God's grace is the most powerful force in the universe. So, I would have to argue that grace is the most beautiful word in the universe. It reaches where you are and takes you where God wants you to be. It has the power to do something that nothing else can do. Transform you at the causal core of who you are as a human being, your heart. Did you hear what he said? Grace has the power to change your heart. It's the reason why the law fell short. Because the law didn't have the ability to change your heart. It had the ability to change your actions. It had the ability to steer you in a particular way that might be good. In fact, the law was good. Jesus said, I didn't come to abolish it. I came to fulfill it, which he did. But it doesn't of its own change our heart, which is kind of funny because from the very beginning, God actually... I mean, we, we think that the Israelites thought if they kept the law, that made them right with God. No, keeping the law was a demonstration of their faith in God. It was always grace from the very beginning. God said, no, if you do this, I'm going to be your God and you'll be my people. It's grace and it's overwhelmingly beautiful and it's a word that I cannot just say well it's undeserved favor there's so much more to it than that um, like any good preacher would I stole from somebody else this morning actually I just named him Paul Tripp um, to give you five ways or five ways in which grace is seen first is in forgiveness. Forgiveness. We are, it, it's very clear um, that grace is a gift. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Forgiveness. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. Grace brings forgiveness. Jesus Christ going to the cross for our sake, bearing our sins. This is grace. Two, it's acceptance. God doesn't just forgive you. This is, this is another place where we, we struggle with this. We, we think that God forgives us, but if we mess up, well, God's not forgiving us anymore. But you forget who you are. You've not just been forgiven, you've been accepted. In Romans 6, 5, or excuse me, 8, 15. For you didn't receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you've received a spirit of adoption. You've been adopted. God chose to adopt you and bring you into his family. You've been accepted. Presence. Grace brings presence. Um, 
we, we see this, uh, we talk about the, in the early church, and I, y'all, I'd really kind of like to go back and pick up where I left off last year, last year, but I think some of you are getting kind of tired of it, so whatever. We'll, we'll see how that goes. But presence, um, Acts 6-8, Stephen, what does it say about Stephen? A man full of God's grace and power. Full of God's grace and power. It's the presence of God within him who performed miracles and signs. Galatians 4, 6. And because you were children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. When God's very presence with us. Fourth, it's enablement. It's enablement. God gives us the ability to actually live in such a way that we transform the world around us. Uh, Paul Tripp again says, Remaining sin leaves us lame and weak and unable, but God's grace intervenes to give us power and strength. It gives us the ability to do what we're called to do, but what we could never do on our own. Hebrews 4.16 said, So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. And grace is enablement. And fifth, grace is freedom. Freedom. What does sin do? It makes us bound, but grace gives us freedom. Romans 6, 14, Sin is no longer your master, for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead... You live under the freedom of God's grace. Freedom. If you're walking around worried about what God's going to get me, you don't understand the beauty of God's grace. No, he's not wanting to get you. If he has you, he already has you. No, we walk in freedom. It's, It's not freedom so that we can just Well, we can just sin with abandon. No, it's freedom so that we don't have to. Did you really think that somehow before you were free when you were slaves to that stuff? No, now you can walk in freedom. And and there's another one, uh, six. Completion. Completion. It's a... It's a grace that brings things to completion. And I, I one of this, this is a passage that I read in funerals and, and you've heard a hundred times, but y'all, we're people of ultimate hope. That God isn't just going to be nice to us while we're here and then that's it. No, God is going to bring everything to completion. Revelations 21, 1. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared and the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from from God out of heaven like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And then I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there'll be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain all these things are gone forever grace brings all things to completion so yeah I mean okay it's a trip of a lifetime And, and I wish if, you, if you've never been there, I'd love for you to go there just, just for once, just to experience the awesomeness of the... I, I don't know what else to say. But do you know Jesus has offered to us something even far more beautiful, far more magnificent, far more in many ways unbelievable which is why we keep trying to make it into our own image which is why we keep twisting it and adding all kinds of things that aren't there no 
Jesus has given this overwhelming beauty as he's giving us overwhelming grace. And the question for us is just whether or not we're going to live in it. Whether or not we're going to walk in it. Whether or not we're going to receive it and be transformed by it. Because, you see, the overwhelming beauty of creation is one thing. But the overwhelming beauty of a life that has experienced new creation, there ain't nothing can compare to that. And that's a new creation. And that's a new life that's available to me and to you and to every person on the planet who will only believe it. Let us pray. Oh, Jesus. How beautiful. your goodness and mercy to us is. Abba, Father, the one who's seen us at our absolute worst and still draws us yearning for our presence. O oh, Holy Spirit, who indwells in us, who counsels us and gives us the wisdom to live in a way that is beautiful. Help us, O oh God. We're weak, Lord. We've fallen short and we've said we no longer deserve your grace. We've sought our own and we've, we've gone about our own way and we thought that we must be disqualified. And yet like that father who was waiting on the outskirts of the town, looking on the horizon, hoping that his son would return. So Lord, you're looking on the horizon for us hoping that we will return. Oh Lord, you're standing there on the outskirts of the town looking toward the horizon and you've invited us to be there with you looking for those who may return. Oh Jesus, challenge us. For you've called us to go and to make disciples of all nations. And sometimes we're not doing such a good job with that. Help us, Lord, to not just receive that overwhelming grace, but to show that same grace to others so that we might truly be your church. Amen. I invite you to stand now. I invite you to reflect as we sing our closing hymn, this great hymn, How Great Thou Art. Let's stand and sing together.
just a moment I'm going to give the benediction but I'd love for you to look around see somebody you've not spoken to or that you don't know and when the service is over instead of rushing out to tell me how wonderful my pictures were (laughs) how about go and visit with somebody else and just spend a little time together receive now the benediction the overwhelming beauty of God's grace completely enveloped in the love of the one who restores and makes all things new. Go now and be the church. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.